Blockchain-based algorithmic art is bucking the bear market trend of NFTs, and one of the most popular platforms supporting this work is five-year-old art blocks. Eric Calderon, aka Snowfro, is an artist and CEO of Art Blocks, which is breaking over one billion dollars in total generative art sales on the primary and secondary markets. He is one of Coindesk's most influential 2022. He joins us now, Eric. Great to have you on the show. So we are seeing NFTs down about 90% year to date. How are art sales doing, uh, generative art sales doing in the bear market? I oh, mean, that's a tough question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's a great honor to, um, to receive this award. Um, the, the, the world of generative art is just a, it's a nascent new thing uh, uh, when combined with blockchain technology. Obviously, the art form has been around for for a few decades, but um, uh, it seems that blockchain technology has created a beautiful product market fit for this type of artwork. And um, even though we went through some kind of crazy times last year, oh man, look at that chart. Um, <laughs> the the reality is that uh, you know, I think I think that this type of technology, this type of idea of individual outputs and individual results uh, for each individual. Consumer uh, is something that will apply to greater society, so well beyond just what we're experiencing today. And so I think we're still kind of scratching the surface of, of what generative technology can do. And obviously generative art uh, is, is my passion. It's a passion uh, that I share with a couple hundred artists on the platform and a few thousand collectors out there in the ecosystem. Uh, and it has really demonstrated that one of one of X, the, the idea that um, you know one algorithm can generate uh, th hundreds or thousands of unique and verifiable outputs uh, is something that um, could could have implications well outside of just the blockchain space. Well, one generative art trend I'm seeing blowing up right now is this Lenza AI app. And people, you know, you put your profile picture in or your a photo of you and it generates all these avatars. Lawrence, you've been using the app a lot uh, yourself. Uh, and some of <laughs> so, oh, look just at once, this. So some of these beauties, <laughs> very yeah, galactic. Gave... But I look like I... Sean Lennon here. I, I, what, what? <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's uh, yeah. I, I just put in one, a few images, and then this, the, the output was like fifty, sixty. Although I see only you've only narrowed it down to like three of them. <laughs> I, yeah, there was a great Roman Roman uh, soldier one. But Eric, I, I'm curious what your thoughts about the competition out there, AI generating art, and you know, art, some artists say, you know, this is unfair. It's not. It's not real art. You know, you haven't put the time, the effort to really create it. Uh, I mean, I, I love AI conceptually. I love uh, uh, everything about it. I, I think I'm, I'm someone that embraces all technologies, uh, and I think it's a really interesting technology. There are some issues, right? Like, what is the appropriation of where, where's the image coming from, and is there appropriation there? Um, I'll be honest. I've been living under a rock and not necessarily able to fully dive into like what the, the beautiful opportunities are with the AI world. In fact, everything I know about AR today uh, has come from Twitter and following all the people that I follow in the generative art world and Twitter. Uh, regarding competition, I think that if this type of uh, product market fit, this kind of distribution mechanism for uh, individual, unique, individualized outputs for people is actually going to be something that's going to transcend crypto, then I think um, you know the more competition, the better. Like We need more people out there uh, demonstrating the technology, innovating the technology, and figuring out exactly how this is actually going to apply to the world outside of um, of just like you know uh, Ethereum transactions and MetaMask. Um, there, it, it seems that generative art has found you know a meaningful audience uh, outside of just the crypto art world. There's people that really seem to appreciate generative art, I, um, in, now starting even with the with the traditional art world. Uh, and, and, and again, this is pixels on a screen. This is the easiest use case of generative technology. This is the lowest friction use case of this technology. Uh, we, we firmly believe that this technology will find its way into other things. So bring on the competition. Let's have more people out there. Let's have more people talking about generative art. Let's have more people talking about generative manufacturing, design, all of these things. Um, uh, so that so that so that we can actually see something more global than than just this little bubble that we sometimes find ourselves I mean, in in the crypto space. I have to say, I, it, it's too bad you're not following the AI uh, uh, aspects of this because I was wondering in all of it, uh, your 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 thoughts about you know hey, here we have this art form that 
uh, is taking off on social media. And, and one of the things that has happened on social media is, of course, body image issues. Um, and here you have those those fantastic photos of me in outer space and whatever. And, and there are others that Christine has seen, but uh, we're, we're sparing the people of, of, Not of our view work. Our viewers. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot, of, a lot of upper body work there that would have been involved. But the thing is that um, I, I'm wondering, like, what, are, what do you think the negative social aspects of all of this could be? Um, you know, we already have people who are, you know, trying to compare themselves to the Kim Kardashians of the world. What happens when they see an idealized version of themselves through, this, through art and all of a sudden, you know, do, do we actually, is it going to cause more social harm than good? I mean, is social media causing more social harm than good? It, it, that's a yes. really rough question to answer, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I for example, yes. social media, uh, what would Artblocks be today if it wasn't for Discord, for example? You know, like, uh, the, it, it, and, and honestly, there, Discord has caused me some pretty serious mental health issues, but at the same time, Discord created a, a, an audience, an, an amphitheater for displaying the artwork that was generated in Artblocks where everybody could get together and and uh, enjoy it at the same time uh, early on in the platform and, and still today. And so, yeah, I, it's, I think there's a double-edged sword with everything that we do. Um, I, I think that we should be very careful with AI in the same way that we should be very careful with crypto um, and, and just all the things that we do. I think there's no, there's no just like sweet thing in the world that's just purely sweet. And um, I think it's really about people being good shepherds of the technology and people really kind of doing their research and studying both the people selling and the person people buying uh um we we really need we are in a time in society where we really need strong just honest ethical leaders mm -hmm. to be shepherds of this technology of all of these technologies because it's so easy to get i mean you know just look at the last couple of months right like it's so easy for everything to just explode and you know i've been saying this a little bit more lately but it seems like today in crypto like for the most part you just have to be able to walk in a straight line just to be successful like it's really depressing that just by being honest and ethical you can actually have like a, a long-term trajectory in this space we need more of that we mm -hmm. need more people that are willing to set aside uh you know a lot of the inherent human nature of greed and whatever to just realize that we're sitting on a bunch of technology, AI, crypto, the generative stuff that actually can have a hugely positive impact in society in the future, but it can also be completely corrupted by uh, using it inappropriately. And uh, there's an example with what's happening with FTX, right? Like FTX yeah. doesn't have a lot to do with crypto specifically, but we're all suffering as a result of, of those yeah. things. The technology is neutral. The actors are good or bad. Who gets the royalty in these gener generative art sales? You know, what's the distribution? The how's that breaking down between user or the AI platform? Who should get the royalty? Well, I don't know about AI. I don't know anything about what's going on with AI. But with uh, with generative art, with art blocks, um, for every transaction that's paid on a platform that is honoring royalties. Uh, the artist gets five percent of the royalty, and our bucks gets two and a half percent of the royalty. So it's a it's seven and a half percent, what we call kind of creator uh, royalties uh, for our for our platform to then be split into the artist and 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 our bucks. Uh, on top of that, a marketplace might take another, for example, two and a half percent. You know, there, that's rapidly changing. There's a lot of conversations happening with royalties. Um, you know, a, a lot of what's happening with royalties feels to me incredibly short-sighted, but I'll, obviously, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm an empathetic person and I can understand why people do the things that they do. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are in a world that is led by um, black and white code and decentralization. And I feel like a lot of the things that are happening today are, mm. are uh, kind of a, a reactive measure uh, to, um, you know, for short-term 